Welcome everybody. My name is Rajnikant Patel. I'm a retired executive and author of children's books. I'll be the moderator today. Our format today will be that the speaker will introduce the topic for 15 minutes. Then I will have question and answer for 15 minutes. And then the rest of the time we will open up for the audience. Let me introduce today's uh, holistic science expert, Deepak Anandji. Deepak Anandji has a bachelor's of degree in electrical engineering and has several years of experience in the industry before he moved on to holistic inner science. From the very early childhood, he had an inclination to be a celebrate and in search of answers to the puzzles of everyday life. His answers were obtained when he received self-realization through the grace of self-realized holistic scientist A.M. Patel in 1983. Since then, he has pursued his dream to work selflessly to spread the message of holistic science for the upliftment of the entire mankind and answering questions from people how to resolve uh, everyday life. He has devoted his entire life for the studies of holistic inner science and visiting rural and urban areas all over the world, including India, USA, UK, Canada, uh, Europe, Africa, New Zealand, Australia, to spread the understanding of this uh, life, which is very simplified by the holistic inner science. He's an expert on uh, holistic inner science and interpersonal relationship. He attends many seminars and conferences and his speciality is question and answer sessions. Holistic science is uh, inner science, which shows how to know what is about the world, how does it function, how our life goes on, how to solve the puzzles of our daily day life, how to attain happiness and permanent bliss, why do we get anger, bliss, pride, deceit, greed, and what is the science of inner science of the mind, intellect, subconscious, ego, etc. And it very particularly how is karmas and uh, charge and discharge. Welcome, in Dipakaranji. Thank you for introducing me and uh, hello, everybody. <clears throat> Before we discuss today's topic, you know, uh, about a month we had the last session about and the homework we had be mindful of the mind, speech, and body activities since they're the greatest teachers for our life and correct them as we go for our inner happiness. So anybody has any feedback? I will share my feedback uh, for the last one month. You know, I've been uh, not quite, but a little bit conscious about my speech. And that has really, I think, concluded in me speaking less and less uh, and trying to understand more and more. Uh, Deepakani, do you have any comment on that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll share my experience. Uh, uh, you see, we have discussed that today's life is definitely effects of previous lives, projected doership, causes of unforeseen likes and dislikes, what we call as Raga and Dvesha. For everyone, and, and of course, for every one of us. And so, of course, I also cannot be any exception in that. And because you cannot be born out of nothing without a specific orderly uh, egoistic cause. Previously in the scheme of mother nature or as per uh, there is nothing like mutation. Something happened all of a sudden. In the medical term, they say mutation. So what it says, there is definitely a specific order in everything that happens in our life. So I came across a very tricky situation with my colleague uh, where we ended up in a hot argument on a very petty, trivial matter. Uh, for which normally I wouldn't get irritated or even argue at all and would uh, very easily adjust. 
but uh, when previous forces of our likes and dislikes are powerful, they play their part and you don't tend to remain mindful and get easily driven away by your egoism. So uh, we ended up in a very silly argument. It lasted for a while with a hot verbal wrangle. Everyone saw that it was a really very embarrassing situation for me. But then I realized, hey, what am I doing? And uh, how does it matter here or there, these or that? You cannot insist. I recall the holistic science principle of unity, oneness, that it is not important whether I'm right or the other person is wrong. I don't have to prove myself. Come what may, mind-wise, I shouldn't differ in any situation from anyone because uh, that can easily lead us to a broken relationship. And so, holistic science says, I must adjust. And my wisdom of holistic science took over the situation and I dramatized the situation, heartily confessed my mistake of being unnecessarily stubborn and accepted his proposal and the matter got resolved. In fact, after the situation, I found that my colleague was very nice with me and was very helpful during the whole program. We both regained our happiness and our relations flourished. So this is how, you know, being mindful of our own mind, speech and body due to the inner force, yes, one moment it will rule over you and overcome your wisdom but when you are mindful you when you have decided to be mindful about everything that what you are doing then definitely it eventually helps you come out of the situation with the help of holistic science thank you well thank you well, thanks for sharing this experience because you know invariably we always get into this kind of thing right and uh, especially when somebody says something then you tend to be, try to overdo that person by showing your, uh, you know, your experience or trying to show them you are superior, you have more knowledge. And that then back and forth, then it, it gets it's a big hassle. And in the end, uh, your happiness is really uh, gone. So thanks for sharing this. So let's get to this topic. You know, last time we talked about karma karma, which is a very, very wide topic. And in that, I was going back and reviewing your talk and you said you should know yourself as true self. So I thought that was a very good uh, topic. Uh, and, you know, today's life is a fruit of the past seeds that were sown. Our future fr fruits will be what we sow today. In this infinite cycle, if know thyself as your true self, one can break the cycle. That's what you're saying. So now, please explain to that because, you know, normally we always say, I did it. I put it. I, I had put all my effort. I am also the doer and I am macho or I did this and I did that, you know. And let's face it, our life is mechanical, you know. Uh, our goal is to learn something, go to college, make money, have comfort for our families and of oneself. So we are always going after more, more happiness. And I am the doer. I did this. I did that. I did that. <coughs> so uh, what's wrong in that? Uh, other thing is, you know, in going, doing this, we feel a lot of pains and conflicts that like we talked earlier, uh, which inc incur which is really price we pay for our joy and comfort, but we never pay attention to that. So in this process, we hurt ourselves as others. We increase our anger, our pride, attachment, greed, likes and dislikes, thus creating another vicious cycle. So what part in life are we missing? How about knowing oneself well? Can you explain to that, please? 
surely uh, so let us first uh, try to understand yes today's life is definitely fruits of our past deeds which were shown that is caused by our past by ignorant projected worship and the the basic reason for that is truly nothing comes from nothing what it means there got to be some definite cause for today's happening and our fruits future fruits would be sown today so uh, how we cause them today by our reflection and projection becomes very important and this infinite cycle of tenth and birth uh, if one knows his true self uh, one can easily break this vicious cycle forever and that is where uh, wisdom of knowledge self realization self knowledge enlightenment all these things come into picture and uh, this common phrase is what we see and hear around that oh i put so much of effort i did this i did that i did so many things in my life but what have i got in return <clears throat> and uh, what is the need to know about ourselves and all that stuff but holistic science has a wonderful explanation for all these because one thing is very really clear and very nicely said by holistic science that this science is working at the core of every existence more specifically in humans because of their uh, elevated or uh, uh, very evolved mind and intellect and due to that whatever they say has relevance with this core science although we are not aware of that science and if we get aware of that science then our life changes drastically so we utter these words very commonly but efforts as it is understood got to be independent for my efforts i need not depend upon others i don't but i see that i need support from so many other agencies which we conveniently ignore or we are not aware of that like the time plays a very vital part in our lives happening the place the weather conditions our own health there are other people's health which we take uh, to accomplish our goal which is definitely not in our control yet they do contribute to your efforts and give you success uh we also say that that there is no end to our desires see we come across new things we keep coming across new things and there arises fresh desires and until you know who you are it is not possible to end these desires it's like desire means you have a goal and once you accomplish that goal while accomplishing that goal you come across other things and other desires pops up in your life and you want to do that that's why this vicious cycle of desire never end and we keep going on and on but here lies the importance of knowing your true self who you are the reason is the happiness what we get from all this thing or accomplishing our desire they are mainly focused on five sense happiness only and we all know that this happiness doesn't last long they end and when they end then we again look around for more happiness here and there so this is the purpose you must know who you are and until and unless you know who you are truly who you are we always say i am so and so i am so and so 
we also say i know i know yes i know and we also say i did this thing i did that thing which we have said those phrases you have quoted but when you know who you are actually within our body we have the body self the outside body which everyone sees and the inside stuff of mind inner speech uh, you have intellect you have reflective consciousness you have egoism which you cannot see but that is the part of the uh, body self and you have the soul uh, also inside due to which we all are living the living aspect is because of the presence of the soul inside and we all know that and uh, we say sometimes i know so it is like we favor the functionality of the soul and at time we say we i, I did it so that is the functionality of the body and the body functions or whatever we do the so many other uh, evidential causes they contribute for anything to happen so how can we say i did it when so many other things have contributed for our success so when you know your true self who you are then that will end the vicious cycle of uh death and birth and that will also end all our desires and the only desire that would be there as our goal in inner goal would be of um uh, attaining permanent happiness and freedom from this cycle of death and birth because it is said to be born itself is a big pain and to free yourself from that very pain you must find out the source how can you end this cycle and that is the beginning is you must know who you are your true self as soul that every spiritual uh, path says and then you will experience bliss and you would become free from all different beliefs desires now and forever with no about that cycle you also said that uh, we say that let us face our life it's all mechanical what it means the bodily activity of all the four life forms like humans animal plant angels and the uh, lives of hell <coughs> <clears throat> is totally mechanical it is like how the equipment runs it is how the car runs but within the car there is a driver who drives the car but he can drive the car if the car condition is good or perfect so today our body condition is not perfect body is not perfect so however you want to drive it's not happening we all experience that so although body is moving but it is not conscious as pure soul it doesn't have the power of knowledge because uh it, it is only the pure soul within us this is spirit also which is pure consciousness and body is mechanical consciousness in the sense the activity of body doesn't prove its knowledge function and it totally acts under the power of mother nature um the true living aspect of feeling as i am is within our body we all live as i am but body is living solely by the uh, power of mother nature because if you inquire yourself how someone is living and how someone when get sick or dies who makes the person die because the doctor says he oh my god he was absolutely healthy there was no reason for him to die but then they say oh because of his age factor but that age factor can come for someone at age of 
or it could come at the age of 80, it can come at the age of 110 also. So this is where we have to know the true living aspect that I am is within our body and it is solely because of the presence of the pure soul, the perpetual entity within us. And uh, it is totally separate from both. This I am is separate from the body and the soul. So sometimes we say I did, that is we relate ourselves to the, with the body. And when we relate ourselves with the soul, we say I know. And likes and dislikes are within this living aspect of I am. Otherwise, both body and pure soul are totally free from likes and dislikes. But our likes and dislikes, they get reflected through our body. So egoism as I am truly wanders in the cycle of birth and death. And it is this egoism which is suffering happiness and pain and because of its likes and dislikes. Uh, because personally, if you say two people are there, because of their belief, one likes the other, other dislike the same thing. So it is not the body that likes or body that dislikes, but it is the individual. So it is one who is living within that body as I am likes and the other who lives in the other body as I am dislikes. And in the same, in this whole process, the pure soul remains separate, untainted and free as pure consciousness within our body. I am in the, is the true, I mean, is truly the impure wandering consciousness. And when the science is known between the body and the soul, one gets the wisdom of true knowledge and one is considered enlightened with self-knowledge as his true self and knowing or having this wisdom of true knowledge, one's inner journey starts, which definitely ends in completeness or absolutism and with total freedom from about that cycle. <clears throat> Uh, you also mentioned that today's goal of our life, we run after money and comfort for our family and our own self. But if you really um, ponder into it, then we know that we all are running outside for temporary five sense happiness only. And we have conveniently ignored and eventually forgotten about the pains and conflict we un incur day in and day out because of this joy of money and comfort. So when joy of money and comfort is there, then these pains and conflict, what we incur day in and day out, we tend to forget them easily. But we don't know that while living through this in our life, we end up having anger, pride, possessiveness, greed, likes and dislikes. And we really don't know that these emotions end up in projecting doership karmas in a very causal form, in a very subtle form. And it creates another vicious cycle of birth and death life cycle. And this goes on and on eternally. So truly, what part of life are we missing? And that is the knowledge of our true self. And when one knows this, he becomes free. <clears throat> Lastly, you had also said that how can one know himself? So it's a very wonderful <clears throat> revelation given by the holistic scientist. He says, one who is bound cannot free himself. And this is because the binding is because of the ignorance and one cannot attain knowledge by one's own self. One needs someone who is free with self-knowledge and has power to impart that very knowledge to others also. So it is suggested that always remain in search of an enlightened person called as man of wisdom, man of conviction, Nani Purush, in your life 
while leaving the effects of the past karmas of likes and dislikes. So no matter because of the lurking ignorance, you are going to <clears throat> further build karmas because of your prevalent likes and dislikes today, but because of that added desire, strong desire uh, to know yourself, to come across the man of wisdom. The other things will naturally become positive and that's how you will progress. The likes and dislikes will gradually reduce with your inner search for the enlightened person will definitely take you to that person. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the uh, uh, introduction of the topic, but this is again a very vast topic. What comes to my mind, what is real myself? Is, you said there are two parts, the body and the soul. So really is ball, uh, the soul is, do we need to know our cell of a soul? Okay, let us see. As we have said, we have a body which is mechanical, like a car and equipment. <clears throat> and within that, there is a factor of pure consciousness by virtue of which we have the living aspect and we live as I am. The body aspect is the relative aspect and the soul aspect is the real aspect. And within this relative and real, I live as I am. With egoism believing I am as the name given to me, although I say it is my name. This is very subtle to understand. So it is like you have the relative part, the body part, the body self, and the soul self, which is the real. Sometimes I say, I did it. Sometimes I say, I know it. So man of wisdom, holistic scientists say, ask yourself whether you did or you know. Because if you are the doer, then you cannot know. And if you are the knower, if you have the power of knowing, then you cannot do. But because of the lack of clarity, conviction between knowing and doing, at our convenience and because of the ignorance, <coughs> we favor activity that is our body, that is our relative, and we claim doership of that of those actions and at other times we claim doership of knowing that yes i know so the truth when it comes to know when one comes to know then he frees because all these activity part is truly part of the scheme of mother nature it is totally governed by that today based on the projected doership of the past and that is where when you come to know who you are, then those activities, they first improve and then finally you get freed from all those activities. Okay? Yeah. Now you keep on saying, you know, I know. Okay? But, you know, in everyday life, we, it's, we run into situations. So based on things I know, I had to make a decision to go this way or that. So how, how do I know if I am the knower? How do I know is the right decision or a wrong decision? First thing, when we are in this world with people around, we have friends, we have well-wishers. So in any situation, if you really want to know whether your decision is right or wrong, it is always said that in the wisdom of worldly life says, ask five people whom you trust, who know that they are your well-wishers only. You will easily come to know whatever you are doing is right or wrong, very easily. But many a times 
when we are more keen in doing certain thing because we have our own self interest whatever is the cause we don't ask and when we get into trouble we seek help from others and at that time they say why didn't you ask me before doing don't we come across such a thing let's say if your son did something without asking you then you blame him but if he has done something after taking your permission and if anything goes wrong you say don't worry i am there with you right see yeah. this is what the benefit you have in asking and doing things but this egoism is such when it wants to do certain thing then it doesn't ask anyone you don't ask anyone that is where you get into trouble because there are other the well wishers mean they are more experienced than you you ask them so you will be safe okay now also you know you are we talk about our purpose of life going through a mechanically trying to get to more money and comfort level for that so and in the meantime you said you know you need to seek out for a person uh who can help you to know yourself but so till then how do you or what do you need to do to make sure that you know your life becomes balanced uh, in working as well as or better word i would say spiritual spirituality you know okay. so uh, something has to be in the process you must learn something or do something that will also go make you towards your goal of finding the person and also uh, behaving or doing something uh, which is right very true see uh, for this a very simple i would not say prayer i can say it as a prayer or my decision my reflection of my life i decide i mean it is decide, i mean it is suggested that you decide that you don't want to hurt anyone through your thought speech and action your mind speech and body so with this very <clears throat> uh pledge or with this very decision of your life uh it is it is going to reflect back on you return back on you what you decided because you are getting hurt out of your mistake only you cannot get hurt without your mistake so when you decide today pledged decide that i want to give happiness to everyone i come across through my mind speech and body and i don't want to hurt anyone this will eventually give you worldly happiness abundant worldly happiness but it will also give you come across an enlightened person because when you are hurting others it creates a lot of disturbance in the nature and such an enlightened person is uh blissful he lives his life with that uh, humility so naturally when you are hurting others you will not come across such a person but with this very simple prayer i don't want to hurt anyone to my thought speech and action then eventually you will come across such a person because he is looking around for someone who is seeking happiness who don't want to hurt others and that's why he said he said i will look for you look around for you in the world and i will pick you and take you out of your misery Ooh, so very this very simple prayer i don't want to hurt anyone because we don't know subconsciously or i will say unconsciously we have decided i'm not going to take things easily i will retaliate i will fight back i'm not going to give up and this very i will say arrogant or violent decision for our happiness that whoever comes in my way of happiness i'm not going to spare that person 
but we don't know that we have decided to hurt others in the scheme of mother nature and that's where i will end up hurting others and in return i'll get pain and suffering only but the day i decide not to hurt anyone it changes my atmosphere my vibrations and that's what i get in return eventually and the finality is i will definitely come across an enlightened person and i'll get to know my true self who i am that is wisdom of true knowledge and eventually become free from birth death cycle very good this is a very simple formula you've given uh for the aspiring people uh who want to live their life uh in the, this mechanical world yet have a spiritual aspect of it now one question before we turn on to the audience you know how do we find the sulfur how would we know that we have found this person we are seeking that he will give us good guidance he will give us the formula for uh, knowing myself and then uh, move on with my life perfect question see one thing a person man of wisdom man of conviction <clears throat> he has known the uh, world he has no confusion at all he has no problems at all because he know why things are happening in his life and around the world so he is free from all worldly desire and because of his self knowledge and enlightenment the only desire what he may have and he has is he wants to part his knowledge share his knowledge share his experience of bliss with others and such a person will never be uh, uh, he will always be a giver he has come in this world to give because he knows whatever he gets from the world is out of his own karma so he doesn't pay attention to all that he learned how to handle these things in a balanced way in a amicable way and his desire to share his experience of bliss with others naturally brings all those people to him and that's how we also come across him so to identify it's a very simple litmus paper test he will be a person who is a giver he will not take anything that that you like but he will take away everything what you don't like or that is bothering you this is a very clear perfect test he has come into this world to give only he will never take and he will never take any worldly thing not those things which you like and whatever you do with him he will always bless you even if you hurt him he knows that it is out of his karma not out of your doing because you are just an instrument in the scheme of mother nature and with that wisdom of knowledge he remains happy blissful and even after you hurting him he gives he blesses you that is the best thing so the clear indication is he is a person who is, who has come into this world to give he will not talk negative about anyone he sees every everywhere positivity and just by being in his company near his vicinity you feel happy you feel great so these are the indication very clear indications and you will always get benefited by him excellent excellent i think this will be a topic we'll do some day so you can uh, you know sure. expound more yeah. on that so we can really visualize the uh, the person that uh, you're talking about okay with that one i still have a lot of questions but uh, we'll go into the audience and i think uh, sure uh <laughs> gifty man had a question Uh, sure yes um this is my question in day to day living you have to depend on society your friends your relation 
and sometimes try to understand and comprehend the the um, the role of nature, the mother nature, how all the other factors are making that things happen because sometimes I still see them at fault and <clears throat> I do not comprehend completely how the mother nature, so all the other elements is part of the thing because you know I see them on face to face and I say oh yeah they did it because I saw you so how can I how can I make it easier for myself and to leave and understand what happened and see them innocent or not at fault. Right. There are two aspects in this. Number one is you are seeing them at fault. First of all, if you are doing, if you are doing in the sense, if someone else is doing, then you cannot get hurt. If someone else is doing, you cannot get hurt. You get hurt out of your doing only. But you don't realize that what was caused on this body previously, you don't know. You only see the effect today. So you get confused and when things happen, then you blame others for your pain and suffering. But, but I what see about you see it, huh? But I still see them doing it. And how can I accept that, it? How what, can I that, that's why we say if you ask them why did you do, who inspired you to do, then where does that inspiration come from? Why someone helps you in your life and why others bother you in life? Who gives them inspiration to help you? Who gives them inspiration to hurt you? Then if it is reaching you, that is your happiness or your suffering, mm -hmm. then there is something, some mechanism in the nature which is uh, identifying those causes within you and delivering those things from outside. Do you understand? Because the, the person doesn't know why am I doing this. At times, we come across situation when the other person is doesn't know us at all. And that person ends up hurting us or at times they end up helping us also. But the bottom line of every happening is I suffer whether happiness or pain. And for that, only I am responsible. I'll give an example. If the school and the teacher gives you result, and uh, the result is you get good grades, then how do you evaluate that? Those good grades are out of your doing or what the, the teacher manipulated or what teacher thought about it? No, because I everyone knows that. that no, it is my the grades I got is how I fared in my exam. But so in the same way, the way we have fared in our life exams, we come across happiness and suffering through outside agencies, apparent outside agencies, but they are like teachers in our school, in our college, who examine our paper and gives our paper. But when you say our paper, again, because of our belief as I am body self, the name self, that's why we take the burden or happiness and pain on us. So this is the first aspect. Why we come across happiness and pain in our life. Is that clear? Yeah, somewhat. The second right. part, the second part is like when your son says, my head is aching, my tummy is hurting me. You say that my tummy is hurting me. 
when he says my tummy is hurting me who do you think is in pain he his tummy is hurting right and when you say my tummy is hurting me who do you think is in pain me both are saying my tummy is hurting me my tummy is hurting me so now you as i am when you have this body belief as i am the name bearer yeah. then it is the name bearer who is saying my tummy is hurting because you as i is separate from the body you as i is separate from the pure soul because pure soul is the pure soul entity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but yeah. the suffering and pain that comes to the body and the body says my tummy is hurting you connect your i with that mind right but when your son says my tummy is hurting you don't connect your i with his mind correct you yes yeah. so with this understanding also it is difficult it's not that easy but because we have contemplated that that belief is so much wound within us my body my body my body my body and body is name is the name given i am so and so and i believe i am so and so so with that belief only you feel hurt that i believe that is ego is not there while you are sleeping and at that time if someone says anything to you or does anything to you and you don't wake up then you don't feel anything nothing happens but now that you are awake and if someone tells you something or does anything to you that is your body then you react hey don't do this don't tell me like this so then that egoism pops up you know, although that no one is there inside even while you are sleeping but that ego is absent while you are sleeping so you don't have any problem it's a very subtle understanding and analysis but this is what is happening and when you understand that then you gradually come out in the sense that if you get bad grades then what is your first reaction oh i didn't fare well in my exam due to that i got bad grades but though that exam was given previously so now if you want to have good grades you decide i will do well in my coming exam i must prepare better in the coming exam so that i will improve my grades yeah. so that's how your present is very important but what you come across is the past exam results that is effects how you fared in the previous exam and that is life and when you come to know this understand this then you know how to learn how to handle the effects of the past exams at the same time give perfect and prepare perfectly for the future because by doing by faring well in the present life exam so whatever situation you come across as effects they end up creating new causes in your life but when you remain as knower then yeah. you know that that suffering and pain has come to the name bearer body self it has not come to you and you remain as a knower only so with this wisdom of knowledge you will remain separate you will correct yourself improve and that's how eventually you will come out of all the pains and suffering because this happiness is only five sense happiness but with this knowledge of self and wisdom of knowledge of self you will enjoy and experience bliss of pure soul the absolute knower within you it's a it's a process because we are so much bound by our belief our, our body self belief we are not able to come out that easily because the knowing function is only of the pure soul period the body doesn't have knowing functionality at all it just happened how can i get more stronger 
into that that i am the i want to we go around in the world we keep listening he did this he did that mm -hmm. i am in problem i am in trouble i am happy so when others say like that we also say like that and we also believe like that and that's how things happen to us also we have learned from people but when you come around and be in uh company of wise people then you will always listen to those words of wisdom and that will keep correcting you it will help you remain vigilant about your soul self and you will be able to free yourself from all doership egoism and you will Thank remain at door only it's a process it's a process it's like if you want to become a doctor then you remain in the company of doctor people spend 10 12 years in the college and so much they do and they try to become a perfect doctor right that's how it is thank you thank you good explanation thank you is there any other question from anybody okay in the meantime uh, while people are thinking i have a question in sure. your conversation you said uh you know knowing myself reduces the desires so so how how, how can it be possible because you know you have a goal to earn so much money your goal do that so how can those desires uh, be reduced right so it is like when you are when you know yourself who you are then new worldly desires will not pop up but those which are there within you as part of the previous projected causes only those will come and even while um, putting all your efforts to accomplish them because of this wisdom of knowledge you will always see that no one is getting hurt so those desires also they get fulfilled easily without any reactive or negative effects and then you know that these desires worldly desires are simply for the five sense happiness stuff only so whatever is there remnant in your as part of your karma only that will pop up that will drive you with no more desire because you have started enjoying the bliss of the wisdom of your true self who you are thank you yeah that it, it needs it needs it needs a a, a bit of uh, introspection okay and then you realize that yeah that's true because then because there is nothing new that is coming up whatever is old and unfulfilled uh, desires they will come and play its part and you will be freed because with the bliss of your true self who you have known now you don't have any desire for the petty small things worldly desires of five senses and even if they are there whatever they come as a a uh, karmic effect of the past you handle them amicably without getting disturbed or without even enjoying them because you remain as perceiver of the happiness and pain what the body self passes through because that egoism part vanishes hmm. yeah. so it is like knowing intellectually ego is just, so let's say when you say i know as name bearers belief it is egoistic knowledge it is intellectual knowledge whereas when you say i know as pure soul who you are then it is pure knowledge this pure knowledge will make you experience your bliss where that egoistic knowledge intellectual knowledge will end up in happiness or pain 
You understand? Yes, yes, that makes sense. Now that brings another question. So if, if I know myself, and then this is a body, so what is in my power? What is in, uh, say, Rajini's power then? Perfect, perfect, very right. I mean, absolutely correct. Holistic science suggests you make right decisions of your life as I am for your own happiness and freedom so that you become happy in your worldly life and also get to know who you are as pure soul and become free from the birth that cycle. Enjoy your perpetual bliss which is your true nature. Shall I repeat? No, no, I understand. But then, uh, you know, so my, in my power is, like you said earlier. Making uh, right decisions. Yeah, but right decision, I mean, there are a lot of ifs and buts. So uh, you go this way or this way, and then you take a chance. That's why it is said, when you make right decision of your life as I am. Okay. I don't want to hurt anyone through my thought, speech and action. So that is uh, the, the key crux it will, that will help right. you to guide uh, properly and then eventually all your decisions and all that will go on the right side. Is that what you say? Right. See, just imagine this will not only give you worldly happiness, but eventually it will take you to the man of wisdom from whom you will know yourself and then finally free yourself from the cycle of birth then. Enjoying your bliss, which is your true nature. Hmm. Right, that, that really is a, a, a thought to ponder. Is there any question? I see there's a question from the audience. Sure, yes. Go ahead. I have one. Um, earlier you said, you know, that uh, if you are confused, if you don't know some um, answers of, you know, the things that are bothering you, uh, you should ask. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you have to take a decision, immediate decision. You don't know who to ask even. You don't have a wise man around. Uh -huh. What do you do in this case? Flip a coin. <laughs> Really, really, yeah. then it's like, you know, when, when we make a decision ourselves, then we can blame ourselves. We end up blaming ourselves. So when you flip the coin, if you say head, yes, tail, no. And then you follow that, accept that as your destiny. So this is like, uh, you know, you're, you're asking yourself within yourself that I'm going to take this decision, whether it's right or wrong, you know, it would right, be. Right, because the flipping of the coin, uh, nobody's intervention, there is no anybody's intervention. Sometimes you ask the people, you know, around you, Sometimes they give you answers which you are not satisfied with that. Then that is not right. Then you already have the answer. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah. when you already have an answer and if someone tells you and you don't agree, then you, you are just making a drama. Uh -huh. Absolutely. When, when it's like you don't have any preoccupation, and you go to a person and ask them whatever he or she tells you, you're going to accept it. But if you already have a decision, then that's a question mark, big question mark. So it's like you won't answer which you have already decided. And that's how you're going to get satisfied when the other person agrees to what you have decided already, which is not right. No, yeah. no, then I wouldn't ask if I have the answer. I wouldn't ask uh, if I... But then where is the question of dissatisfaction? Yeah. 
It is only when you follow his decision and anything happens, then you will say, hey, your decision was wrong. But sometimes, you know, the people, um, <clears throat> they are hesitant to give you the answer. If they, they tell you that, you know, you decide this is your decision. That's why it's like if I go to Mr. Patel and he is not clear about the situation, so he says, sorry, you make your own decision. So indirectly, he's telling me to flip the coin. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Otherwise, he would, if he has already, he has some experience, then he will gladly say, and uh, with conviction, with clarity, he will say, I believe you should do this. But after, tell, after asking him and after following him, I should not blame him if it goes negative, then I have to accept that as my destiny only, whether I accept that decision by asking someone or flipping the coin. Yes. Yes, I, w I wouldn't blame him, you know, I just... You know, no, I just, you have to consider that as your destiny only. It's like, yes, see, I, I take you do this, you do yeah. this or that. Yeah. After all, whatever happens to you is your destiny. But we conveniently blame living people, but if you flip the coin, you're going to blame your destiny only. Because there is no living aspect in the coin. And that too, you're not seeing the coin, whether it's head or tail facing this now. Yes. So you, it and you flip it and then whatever happens and that's why see it is like life the meaning of life is keep flowing keep going so whenever we get stuck like this and we get i mean we don't move then use coin so then you don't blame anybody and if you trust someone then ask them but then don't go back to them that you did and everything went down. <laughs> but you will definitely go to the person when you succeed and say, you also the great blessing you said and it happened. But at the other time, also you have to be very positive. Okay, let's but in both uh, the cases, truly it is your destiny only. Yes. Absolutely. Destiny means your karmic effect only. But in the situation you were not able to make a decision, someone helped you make a decision. So. Okay. In fact, whoever you come, you go to and ask, you believe that he was that person who helped me, but no, you are helped by yourself only. Yes. So it's like, if you go to Mr. Patel, then although he's Patel, you, he is Mr. Meta only for you. Okay. Right? That's what. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, there's a very last question. So, uh, Trupta has a question. So, uh, uh, let's make this a last question. Okay. Surely, yes. I just wanted to know, since we are talking about the karma theory, you know, I was wondering, uh, like, supposing, like, something bad happens to me, like, you know, so I, like, I lose money in my business or something, or something good happens to me, you know, uh, you know, the, the, whatever good or bad happens to me is those that happens due to my karmas in in this life only or are they carried from past life it is like anything that happened before this moment contributes to everything that happens now So whether it is previous life or this life, whatever that has happened before this moment okay. contributes to what has happened now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. A mistake which was committed two minutes back now gives you a negative effect. Mm -hmm. So it is effect of the past. Okay. But people don't understand of the past life, then they'd raise questions, who has seen the past life? Right. But then how could you be born? First of all, how can you be born out of nothing? Mm -hmm. 
say for example for anything to be born you need a seed and seed always comes from a fruit mm -hmm. so we have to understand that cycle of life mm -hmm. then you don't have any problem mm -hmm. now if you do pratikraman about something you know would that reverse it of course it will change so what it is pratikraman or correction what it means there what was committed previously mm -hmm. mistake was committed due to which you faced uh, a loss uh -huh. you come across a failure <clears throat> so when you correct yourself Mm -hmm. with right understanding, then you are heading for a positive answer, for a positive result. Okay. So that's how life is a continuous process of correcting yourself, correcting yourself, correct. eventually that final correction will happen and you'll be free from all trouble, all suffering. Happiness, okay. that is temporary happiness or pain and you will come across bliss which will remain forever prevail forever mm -hmm. right right mm -hmm. well thank you very much uh uh Deepakaranji. Uh, i'll summarize a little bit and in the meantime if you can think about the homework we need to do for the next time you know this is a very good topic and i don't know we can go on and on and on but uh key parts is the desires are short term which you alluded and then saying that knowing yourself really helps to reduce this desire and also get into your uh, happiness not temporary happiness but more permanent happiness and and then you also said i did it is a function of body that is a very good topic i mean good thinking that you know the body does all this stuff and you are not the doer of this body uh, and there are many factors uh, why the body does this or that uh, and you also said Bob is not perfect because you know we had imperfect seed, so we're getting imperfect fruits. Uh, it's so it is very interesting. Like one uh, audience person asked the question, so we understanding the nature would really really help uh, us. Uh, uh, and you know, one of the key things you said, uh, your principal mantra or living should be, I do not want to hurt anybody. And that is, I think, a very good uh, takeaway from here. And also you explain the holistic uh, uh, scientist or the Gnani person. I hope we like to know more about uh, that person. So at least people can know the kind of a person he is. True. So I believe let us make this as a homework like <clears throat> uh, we come across things like um, someone tells us do this do that we say i am like this i am like that so let us be mindful and analyze when we say i am so and so i am so and so when you say i am so and so and when others say i am so and so who are they referring to right it's a it's a very subtle thing but then we will come to know who do we believe as i am so when you say i am uh, 75 years old I'm an engineer, I'm, in a doc, I'm a doctor, I'm a businessman. So then uh, whatever is your belief of I, write it down, write an essay on I am. And then identify wherever you have said I am as so-and-so, 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 who are you referring to? When you say like, there are two aspects we haven't seen. One is the body self, another is the soul self so make those two columns and when you say i am 75 years old then hey who does it body me so it is body self 
you say I'm ageless. I know. So I am 75 years old is body self. And I know I am 75 years old is soul self. So you say I am. Uh, say that again. I, I know that I am 75 years old. And that knowledge function is of the soul self. When you say I'm a man, then that is body self identity. I know that I am a man, then it is soul self identity. Oh, very good distinction. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a homework, it's an analysis because life is nothing because we have contemplated subconsciously, unconsciously, when we come across people, everyone does like that. I came, I did, I went through this, this, that, I'm so-and-so, I'm so-and-so, I'm so-and-so, he did this, he did that, look at that, this thing happened, that thing happened. All happening part is of the physical world, and what we see as physical world is nothing but bunch of living forms only. Very Even good. the earth is living, the water is living, the air is living. So we will come to know and have a clear demarcation between the living aspect, that is the body aspect or the matter aspect and the soul aspect. This it's is very good. This is very good. Yeah, that, that's the next. Yeah. Uh, uh, so let us even even because the holistic scientist has said, even someone analyzes scientifically, then he can know and come to the point of that clarity and conviction who he or she is, who one is. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, thank you everybody for attending and thank you very much, Deepakarandji.